wake up in the morning, eat my breakfast, have a cup of coffee, make beats, go outside, take a walk, have lunch, come back, make beats, go outside for a bit, come back, eat dinner, listen to everything that I've done, chill out for the rest of the evening. And I pretty much do that everywhere that I'm at. When the hands in the back of my neck are raised up, and my heart is pumping, means the start of something. Same feeling when you come across what you're afraid of. Made up my mind, I'm jumping, reaching for the sky, I'm trying to blow up. But if I ever fail, then I start to fall in. I hope I don't land in a mind or something. I got started making music kind of a whole bunch of ways, kind of converged into one. Uh, I grew up in the same neighborhood as Gary Scheider, the bass player from Parliament Funkadelic. His sons were my age, he had a full analog studio in his basement, and uh, we used to just go over there and mess around with music. I started getting into MC and I had a lot of cousins who would bring back music from New York down to DC. And then friends that I met told me I should, you know, come over and uh, record some of the verses I was kicking at freestyles at the lunch table. And then I asked him, I was like, where's your drums? Where's your keyboards? I thought you told me you made beats. And he's like, I do, but I sample. I didn't know what sampling was at that time. And he broke it down. I became obsessed with it and wanted to learn how to do it myself. And that's how I really got started. I said to myself, I have to meet my own standards. So I asked myself, who are my five favorite producers? And I put the names out there. And I said, right. I have to be as good as or better than my own listening preference before I expect anyone else to like my music. Because if I'm not as good as what I like to listen to, why should I expect anyone to like what I'm doing? So I would make beats, make beats, make beats. And eventually I would go hear something from one of my five favorites, come back and I was like, oh my god, I still like this. I think I'm ready like, to let people hear this. I still like it after hearing something else. I first started off on Insonic ASRX. The sequencer was off, the pads were funny, but it gave samples a really, really warm sound. Because the sequencer was off, it was hard to loop beat, so drums be became off kilter. And that kind of developed into my style for numerous reasons. so much more portable and efficient as a result of technology. I can make a beat in Pro Tools, send it to my Dropbox, have the artist open the session in Dropbox, record the vocals, hit save, and when I open it again, the vocals are in the session. And I'm doing all this sitting up, sometimes by pool or beats. Well, traditionally, I just perform with a PA. Uh, a DJ, two turntables, and I had my, my, my set as an MP3 on a stick, hand it to the DJ, we work it out. But with this record, because there's so much live instrumentation that went into the production of the album, I wanted to recreate that live. I kind of always had this improv live feel to my music, and then when I got into sampling, immediately I went into the sound patches of the sampler, and tapped keys on my 16 pads over top of my samples. When I started to, you know, uh, evolve with my music, I brought in a guitar player and would just whistle and hum something to him and he'd play it. I always want to push the envelope, I always want to challenge myself, I always want to try something new. And what about the time you give it your all and you still fall short? What will you result? Of course we bounce back, but there's times the force of the smack tells us we should abort. In fact, fair line between the trap to react and the action of pride. Lack of a spleen and what happens collide and what passion and passive behavior. Class gonna grasp with a dream or impact. And as a sampler, you hit a glass ceiling eventually. I wanted to create something that gave me the feel of what I was sampling without losing the integrity of a sample. I definitely think that there's a relationship between like chords and tone and emotion. And I think I'm really in sync with those things. Beats just speak to me. Like the minute a beat comes on, if it's for me, it tells me this is for you. And then after it tells me it's for me, it tells me this song is about this. And it just comes just like that. But you may be working on that loop for hours, for the whole day. You don't know if it's good or not. I 
cut it off and I go outside, I go for a walk, I go out to eat with my friends, I come back the next day. And that usually is enough for me. I just I need a fresh pair of ears. I think it's amazing that this type of technology like, has easy access and that people can actually go to school for it. You know, I don't even know where I would be if, I, if this was around when I started in my career. Just the fact that opportunities exist now for people to discover talents that they may not have ever known that they had because of technology. It's given us so many amazing artists that would have never even had the opportunity to know that they had talent. And I think that's amazing. Welcome to DubSpot. We believe in providing you hands-on experience right away. Whether you're completely new to music and want to turn the sounds in your head into a musical reality, or you're an experienced artist looking to refine your skills and add new tools to your arsenal, we're ready to meet you at your level. For students of all ages, all levels, and all styles of music, DubSpot is here to help you achieve your goals. With course offerings both online wherever you are and at our school in the heart of New York City, we are ready to guide you through the next phase of your musical transformation. Whether you want to produce music, DJ, or do both, you've come to the right place. Come explore DubSpot for yourself. Become a part of our community and make music.